Our next movie and our next film is called Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. It's been in release, as you probably know, for a few weeks, but we're just catching up with it because Warner Brothers didn't want to screen the picture for us uh, before its opening or for, uh, I guess, a lot of the press. At the end of a century, ravaged by violence, a society of perfect order will arise. <laughs> In 1993, fans were excited at the team-up they have longed for, Stallone vs. Snipes, with the release of the science fiction action film Demolition Man. The film takes place in the year 2032. Society has changed and crime is all but gone. That is until Snipes, as Phoenix, is thrown out after being frozen in 1996. To deal with the crazy, violent, 90s thug, the police of the 2032, unfreeze the risk-taking police officer, John Spartan, played by Stallone. The violence in the film is routine, but the script by Daniel Waters and Robert Renault and Peter Lenkov is sprinkled with some smart gags about the 90s made from the vantage point of the 21st century. I didn't care at all about the mano a mano between Snipes and Stallone in this picture, but when they weren't fighting, I did smile a lot during Demolition Man. The film was released in October 1993. With about a $75 million budget, the film would earn a worldwide total of about 159 million, making it one of the biggest hits of 1993. Steven Seagal was first attached to play the lead, with John Claude Van Damme as the villain. But unable to lock them both down to the film, the film producers turned to Stallone, who first turned down the role until rewrites and being drawn to doing something he hadn't done before. Stallone wanted Jackie Chan to play the part of the villain, but Jackie Chan turned it down, not wanting to play a bad guy. The producers then turned their eyes to Wesley Snipes, who turned down the role several times, but the producers kept trying and he finally agreed. I smiled a lot too. In fact, I'm giving this film thumbs up. Okay. And uh, the reason for that is that unlike so many other movies in this genre, it really does have a satiric angle yes. to it. It is really trying to be funny, mm -hmm. and it's really trying to comment on the 90s from the right. point of view of the future. And it does so successfully. In fact, that new world, the brave new world of right. uh, post-apocalyptic California, is funny in its own right with the way that people live, and they're always smiling at each other, and everybody's so happy. And it's, it's what life would be like if smiley faces really took over yeah. society and everybody became a smiley face pod person. The action-packed science fiction film was also packed with a lot of humor, including a running gag of Taco Bell being the only restaurant chain still around in 2023. That was unless you saw the film in the UK, where Taco Bell was dropped and replaced with Pizza Hut. Part is very funny. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it does have the action material, and none of that oh, well, worked the action, at all. Oh, come on, now, come on. Now, the action material is pretty high tech. The special effects are pretty good. I didn't. I didn't uh, think, the, that's the, where we differ. The fight out at the end, the whole business of the guy who gets frozen and then he's able to be shattered and stuff like that was that, okay for this kind of movie. That uh, I did, didn't work for me. The film was seen as a success, yet its budget and gross was about the same as one of the summer's biggest bombs, The Last Action Hero. The film was seen as a comeback for Stallone, who had a string of flops before the release of Demolition Man. To help promote the film, Warner Brothers turned to Mattel for the line of action figures. Demolition Man, the toughest cop in the 21st century. Whoa. But Wesley Snipes is cold-blooded Simon Phoenix. Simon says freeze! Uh. Now fry like a chicken, chicken. But Demolition Man always keeps his cool. Hey, you didn't say Simon says. The future isn't big enough for the both of them. Demolition Man, figures of Bola Jet each sold separately, new from Mattel. Mattel released eight figures. However, four of the eight was all based on Stallone's character, with two based on the Wesley Snipes character, leaving only two figures in a line not based on the two stars. And one of those was just an unnamed tech worker, and the other was Edger Friendly, in the film played by Dennis Leary, with a figure looking nothing like the character. Co-star Sandra Bullock, as Lieutenant Huxley, was a miss and needed opportunity for this line. The eight released figures were Battle Batten Spartan, Bazooka Attack Spartan, Combat Cannon Spartan, Kick Fighting Spartan, Flamethrower Phoenix, Blast Attack Phoenix, Battle Hook Friendly, Cryo Claw Tech. Along with the figures were two vehicles, the Bullet Jet and the Flash Blast 442. Also released with a role playing toy for kids called the Missile Shooter. With the movie being a hit, and being released along with the toys right before Christmas, you would think Mattel would have a hit on their hands, but the toy line failed at the stores. 
mostly due to the film's R rating, making it a missed out for most toy buying kids. Also releasing so many of the same figures in different outfits would have been a turn off to kids. This wasn't Batman we're talking about. If they released a line of at least seven different characters, they might have been able to reach more kids. Also, the action figures look kind of rushed. The Stallone and Snipe figures do look like the actors, but more like it's based on some 90s cartoon of the actors rather than the actors themselves. Each figure did come with a free limited edition movie poster offer, but that did little to help sales. As these figures filled clearance bins and discount stores all through 1994 and still some in 1995. Well, that's a look at the failed movie toy line to Demolition Man. I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up so you like my content. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.